Though disability representation is on the rise, the media is continuing to discriminate against disabled people. They have been presented as socially flawed, able-bodied people instead of as disabled people with their own identities. The media's one-dimensional view of disabilities reinforces stereotypes by emphasizing the impairment over the person with the medical model of disability. This model states that disabled people's inability to interact in normal daily life is a direct result of their physical or mental impairment. Consequently, this overemphasis of the medical model over the social model is what is discouraging disabled people from fully participating in society. Instead of bridging the gap between disabled people and non-disabled people, the media makes the single-story medical model normative, since there are so few stories that are shared to a large audience, and of those few stories, not many are accurate. Using pre-existing stereotypes, the media often turns to the use of disability to add atmosphere and dramatic effect, which objectifies disabled people as props that are used not for their complexity as people, but for their easily identifiable impairment that is exploited by writers for emotional appeal. Disabled people are often portrayed as villains to invoke fear in the audience of the villain and of the movie. Additionally, people with mental disorders are often portrayed as violent psychopaths who are prone to severely harming and killing innocent people. This dehumanizes disabled people, leading them to more likely become victims of violence than perpetrators of violence. Then on the other hand, too good is not good either. Though displaying disabled people as inspirational models appears to be uplifting for the disabled community, this only objectifies them for the benefit of able-bodied people. This is called inspiration porn, which refers to when people are portrayed as inspirational solely because they have a disability. Augie in Wonder is awarded for being inspirational because he managed to withstand a year of bullying, and even in an interview, Julia Roberts, who plays the mother, beams that Augie is a superhero. But why? Just because he is disabled? He's clearly being molded into a typical Hollywood inspirational character. Lastly, the media portrays having a disability as suffering intended to make the audience pity the person with the disability and to make the non-disabled public feel bountiful. Delving deeper into disability representation, more severe problems exist, such as the media painting more ableist narratives. Coupled with Cripface, this may be a more difficult issue to resolve than just stereotypes. One of the most damaging tropes to disabled people is the trope of disability is worse than death. In Orange is the New Black, the show focuses on how Suzanne's trauma-induced erratic behavior is a burden to others and how the organizers opt to use torture and abuse to eliminate that burden. In romance movies, disabilities are also being romanticized in ableist narratives. Me Before You centers on the disabled character seeking euthanasia, perpetuating the false notion that death is better than living with a disability. In Everything Everything, the tagline alone is enough to inappropriately communicate the message that adaptive devices and assistive fixtures are incompatible with a fulfilling life or romance. Most recently, Five Feet Apart is criticized by cystic fibrosis activists for its inherent ableism, arguing that terminally ill people are not alive just to make healthy people appreciate their lives more. This is present in the social media response to the film. No, love is not a cure to disabilities, and these films only trivialize the real struggles people with disabilities face every day. The difficulty of disability representation is that many forms of the media are not ill-intentioned, but even the smallest flaw in presentation can send the wrong message. Therefore, disability representation is made increasingly difficult to cover in the media because it is such a sensitive topic and the fear of saying the wrong thing, including the debate of whether to use identity-first language or people-first language, prevents people from having important and necessary conversations about disability. Regardless, though disability representation isn't even close to being fully authentic, nuanced, and inclusive, it has definitely improved over time. As we continue to remove harmful and untrue stereotypes of disabled people, the percentage of disabled people in employment within the media industry must increase. Better representations of disability include Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, where the parent's attitude towards their disabled child is revealed. The theory of everything does an admirable job of showing the progression of disease in detail and the impact of disability in interpersonal relationships and families, which is usually glossed over. At the end, Game of Thrones proves to be the biggest hit among disability activists, since the disabilities are included more subtly, not in a glorifying way, and the characters live full and complex lives. Sadly, although people are growing more aware of disability representation, one problem still lingers. Crit face, or able-bodied actors portraying characters with disabilities. Filmmakers need to offer equal opportunities to disabled actors since this can help alleviate the exploitation and insensitivity of the portrayal of a character with disabilities. Although there are some exceptions, such as RJ Mitty on Breaking Bad, who actually had cerebral palsy, Peter Dinklage in Game of Thrones and Elf, and Millicent Simmons in Wonderstruck in A Quiet Place who is actually deaf. The majority of big and independent studios, however, have failed to represent the disabled community. 
Fortunately, more award-winning short films communicate more inclusive and complex educational messages that serve disabled people some justice. These short films shine a positive light on disabled people and are the hope for the future of disability representation. At the end, though disability representation is slowly progressing, disabled people need to be more present in the media to bring about a paradigm shift in perception for disability and disabled people. Only then will this media create a stigma be erased for a real change in societal attitudes to become a reality. After all, society's barriers are what actually disable people, not the physical disability.